today I'm going to show you how you can save thousands of dollars by removing a old dry rotted post instead of jackhammering the concrete out and having to re-pour concrete. So you can see here, this is a, a dry rotted post, it's a four by six post supporting a deck next to a swimming pool and it's completely dry rotted. They're tipped about 30 degree angle. You can see at the base there, there's a the concrete is 36 inches deep by 18 inches that hammer. That's a lot of concrete that has to be jackhammered out. And then it's a lot of concrete that has to be poured. I did this for technique for a six of these four by six posts. And this is located down a little hillside, which will be a pain in the neck to get to. Here's a close up of the, uh, the original of the concrete that was poured. Now, once I got the posts off, I just literally snapped them off. I just shoved them really hard and they broke off. I wanted to just double check to make sure that the wood was really dry rotted. And you can see how much it's wiggling just by using this utility knife. If it's, if it's not dry rotted, this is not a good technique. They have to be dry rotted. So here are the, here are the tools that I use. You got a, a nail puller, used for actually the scraping mechanism. You got a crowbar. You have a painter's five in one tool. And I got some utility knives. And those are for scraping the edges the inside of the concrete post um, and just to get all that dry right out. Now this tool here, this is the drill with two extensions. Each extension is 12 inches long, uh, plus there's a six inch bit. So it goes down 30 inches and you can see how easily that thing went down. That thing, 30 inches it went down in the dry ride wood. That is a really good sign. This is a perfect candidate for removing using this technique. Look at that, all the way down. And then once you just do that a little bit, just keep you know, drilling and moving it around, then you scoop out the wood with your hand. Uh, and so that's the process, just drill, scoop, drill, scoop. Uh, you may also then use a crowbar if there's some wood at the bottom that's not so dry rotted, you kind of jam the crowbar down there. And then in the corners and the sides, Sometimes you get some wood that's stuck to the sides or the corners, and that's when the utility knife comes in, and in all these scraping tools. Um, now, in hindsight, I could have used a shop back to suck some of the, the dry, the, the fine dirt or the, the dry rotted wood out. Um, but for the bigger chunks, you use a crowbar and then you just reach down there with your hand and pull it out. Now, for the really dry rod ones, 30 minutes, I had the hole completely cleaned out, going down 30 inches. These posts were 36 inches, but my arm could only reach down 30 inches, so that I was limited by that length. Um, and I figured this this retaining wall was really just holding up a deck and a, rather than supporting a whole lot of, of dirt. So I didn't think it was, uh, that was 30 inches was plenty. So anyway, as I'm digging, I just kept measuring it to see how, how I wanted the goal was 30 inches. There were a couple of them were actually just one in particular. I hit, uh, I hit non-dry rotted wood and I couldn't get any deeper. So I think it went about 20 in, 20 in, excuse me, 28 inches. Now looking in here, here's, Having a headlamp is very helpful. You can see in there on the upper, so the right side in that corner, that flashlight will shine on it. See that? That's typical where the wood gets stuck in the corner, and that's where you use the utility knife and the five-in-one painter's tool, whatever you can, to try to scrape that out. You want to get it pretty clean. Uh, now later, when I show you, when we're going to be using an electric planer, we're going to be shaving off some of the wood on the posts. Um, on the corners as well. So here's the electric planer that I used. Uh, $40 is the price I paid at on Amazon. It's amazing, amazing tool. It shaves off starting at about 1 64th of an inch all the way to about a quarter of an inch is the range. All right, so I've, I've set up a demo 4x6 post just because it's easier to handle. Uh, so the first step and you actually you measure the, the opening and then you measure your post. Now every piece of wood that you buy, a 4x6, is going to be slightly different depending on where you buy it and the manufacturer of the wood. Um, so your goal is to have about the post to be about an eighth or sixteenth of an inch shorter on either side 
than the actual hole in the concrete. So now you're going to mark it the depth. Now it was 30 inches, but for this demo, I marked it at 8 inches. Excuse me, 18 inches. And you just mark it on all sides. You don't want to take off any more wood. You don't want to go higher than the hole because you don't want to have you know, why shave off all this extra wood. So here we go, electric planer. I just start off around uh, a 32nd, one thirty second of an inch. And start shaving and then see how how it goes. And then I just keep shaving more and more and twisting the post until I get it to the size that I want. All right. And just take your time. Make sure you wear your safety glasses. It does produce a lot of dust, a lot of sawdust. And it's okay to go you know, parallel to the board, to the post, as well as you can go perpendicular also. The main thing that I wanted to point out here is, is where to stop planing. So you see that little W on the side of the planer? I'll point it out here. When it hits that line that I drew, well, that, that's the W right below the W is where the blade is. So you want to stop right there. Uh, ideally, you don't want to have you know sections of the post above ground that have been planed because you are taking a little bit of the um, what is it? The, the pressure treating, pressure treated coating off of it, so it's more likely to rot. So you only want those sections like under the concrete. So you can also, I, I actually did treat right along the edge uh, where, where the concrete line is with uh, Thompson's. Actually, excuse me, the uh, copper green, copper green. I painted it on. I even poured a little bit down the hole just to make it add to the protection you could actually to do it really well you would just coat the whole uh, base of the pole the whole section that you shaved off uh you use copper green so right now i'm just shaving the edges excuse me the corners just a few uh trips across each corner you kind of making them a little bit rounded again so it doesn't get hung up when you're pounding it in you also want to shave off the the bottom edges you're almost making like a little stake not really that extreme but you want to round it again the goal is to make sure it doesn't get hung up when you're sliding it down into the hole because that sucks if you get it stuck they're really hard to get out especially if you hammered it with a sledgehammer and only went halfway down that's why i always take a little bit extra off all right you know just do a little quick demonstration Yeah, it goes very, very quickly, especially when I put it on speed up at four times the speed. All right, here's a close up. As you can just see, this is the finished post right before it be installed into the hole. All right, it looks good. Now here's here's the actual post that I slid in. This one slid all the way down. Uh, it was slightly loose, so I took a little bit extra off. Uh, what I do is I use these uh, these shims. They're made of like Trex, that plastic Trex material. I pounded them over the hammer. You could also use some caulking around the gap there to prevent water from going in. It also actually helps it hold a little more snug. And then in a minute, you'll also see how I pour some concrete along the... Uh, oh, let me show this. That was just a demo. So you can go ahead and pound it in with a sledgehammer. Or tap it in if you slam too hard you'll crack the post split it so you'd want to put a piece of metal on top of the post if you have to really hit it hit it hard all right so i add a little concrete cones there just uh basically contouring it at a little bit of an angle to keep the water when it rains to keep the water away from the post so it doesn't go down that with the caulking around it should do the trick really well uh, here's four posts that I installed. You can see the swimming pool, the deck there. 
And there's a ver the very finished product with the uh, fencing that I added.